Hello and welcome back to another episode on the Hermitcraft server. So in the last episode we finally turned on the mob spawner and we built this mob valve system as well. And the first one is hooked up to this XP farm and a few people have pointed out that I could use Hypno's technique to stop the mobs derping around like they are now. Um, but I'm not going to bother with that because 1.3 is just around the corner and it will be fixed when that comes out. So as well as that there's also a big mistake that I've made with this valve system and that's to let the water drop down one block here. I can actually avoid this and the solution is really simple. If I put the sign on that block there and water above it and then a sign on the other side of this glass then the water there is going to flow down to the same level as the water here and continue flowing onwards. So that's something that I'm going to be changing later on in the episode but I'll have something else in mind for the beginning. Last episode I realised that we should be using the nether hub for storage and I've had another thought which is that at some point in the future I'll be setting up an end farm and I'll have lots of ender pearls to transport around the island and that's going to be a lot quicker than the nether hub so that's going to make it obsolete for transport. So we're going to make the nether hub all about storage and the first two portals that I want to build to hook it up directly for storage and we're going to have one here which is going to be for this farm from the mob trap so we've got these items here and then we can just stand here and collect them afk and then jump into our portal and put them in a chest and the other one that i want to build is for our strip mine and that's going to be all the way down there near the bottom of the map so in the nether i can actually put them side by side which is good because it helps for transport if i'm down at the strip mine and i want to come back up to the surface i can pop through the two portals so that way we utilize it for transport as well as storage but the main reason will be to have the storage next to the farm and also next to our strip mine. I've hooked up the nether portal to our mob farm and I was worried about the location of this and as you can see it's fine but if we build something even further away from the centre of the island then the nether portal will be closer and closer to the wall of the pyramid so one thing that I'm going to have to do is rebuild this portal and all of the other ones so that they're lower down and this means that if we ever get one that's going to be outside the range of the pyramid that because we're low down we can just simply dig back and the surface won't be exposed because we'll be underneath this level here. So while I was in here building this portal I also stumbled across something that I can't make sense of. So Biff has been here. So you said you won't, uh, sorry, let's read that again. So you said you wouldn't prank anyone. Well, you may need, you may be needing these. Biff, yeah, I have trouble reading signs. And there you go, a bed, a wooden door, and an ender pearl. And that's like a riddle, because I just cannot figure out what he's trying to get at there. But I'll be thinking about that throughout the episode. So I forgot to mention another reason that I wanted to put the nether portals lower down is because I want all of them to be on the same level, so that will make it the quickest way possible from one portal to the other. Um, so you don't have to go up and down any stairs or anything like that. So here are the two portals and both of them work. The one on the left goes to the strip mine and I've just had the thought that we can move this over by one block and they could share the obsidian in the middle and that would mean that we can make this eight blocks closer to the strip mine because at the moment it's a little bit away but not too much you'll see. So yeah over there is the strip mine and eight blocks is probably about here so we could bring it over and have it a little bit closer. Uh, but the strip mine starts here and it goes all the way around the mob spawner. So I want to build the most effective strip mine that I can and before we go any further I have to correct myself I keep saying strip mine and of course I mean a branch mine but anyway a while ago Efo made this video where he analyzed a randomly generated world in MC Edit to see what levels uh, diamonds appeared at the most. Now I want to do that again do my own test on that but I also want to take it a step further and analyze my strip mine sorry branch mine technique so at the moment I do this I go uh, in a two by one hole like this digging along and then every two blocks or every third block I dig a poke hole like this and then I would go let's put down a torch so we can actually see what we're doing like this two blocks and then I dig like this so this branching technique that I use I want to analyze and make it as efficient as possible and also choose the right height to put it on so by analysing where the diamonds appear the most and considering that we expose by doing this a uh, different amount of blocks on each level. So for example the lowest level we exposed 6 and the top we exposed 
six and also the ones in our poke holes. So I'm going to analyze all of this and figure out what would be the best level to build this at and also how far apart to space these poke holes. Okay this has taken me quite some time to prepare for so I'm going to try and explain this in one go so it might be a little bit of a jumble because uh, I usually stumble across my words and all that kind of stuff and I have to do lots of takes but Anyway, let's get this out. I've been doing loads of maths, and what I've done is I've taken two maps, and I just need to get the numbers up on my screen. So yeah, I made two maps, and I analysed a 432 by 432 area twice, so one on each map. And what I didn't analyse was the first five layers, because all of those had bedrock in, so we don't want to be mining down on that level. And then this is layer 6, 7, 8, all the way up to 16 which is the last layer where diamonds can spawn or be generated naturally so what I've done is I've taken the numbers for how many times diamonds appeared in that area and if you have a look you can see that there isn't really much of an indication there probably would be if I were to do this uh, lots more times but the test takes so long to do that I was only going to do it twice and there really isn't any pattern but what is interesting is that at level 12, which is where I think Efo said was the best to mine, you get the highest number for both uh, both different maps. So the second one overall had a lot less diamonds spawn on it as well. And what I'm going to do is take these numbers and figure out what levels are the best to mine at. And I'm going to take this example of the strip mine and apply it to that. So what we have here is the strip mine and the top is made out of glass just so we can see inside what I've done is I've highlighted each layer with a different colour so each one of these layers is going to be a level where diamonds spawn at. So the green layer we can see the most, you can see there's a lot more green than there is red and I think blue has the least amount of areas that we can see. So if the diamond level 12 was where blue is it would kind of be a waste because we only get to see this much of that level so what I'm trying to do is put this in the most optimal place so we have 88 blocks um, surrounding this segment of the strip mine that we're going to build and we only see 8 of the bottom layer so that's 9% and then we see 28 of the red so that's 32% of the blocks we get to see and 30 which is the level we're going to have to probably put 12 on so we'll actually go on 11 which will be the one below we'll see 45% of the blocks and then the top layer the one we've made, made out of glass um, you only get to see 24 so that's 27 percent. I just want to correct myself on a mistake I've made there when watching back the footage I realized something I forgot to include the air blocks because obviously these are exposed as well inside our strip mine or branch mine as I seem to uh, keep forgetting to call it but anyway these are the actual figures for what we expose on this level instead of 32 percent we're actually exposing 41 and instead of 45 we're exposing 73 and that percentage is of the blocks within the segment of this strip mine in that area so if you look where the diamond blocks are you can picture a square in your mind and that's what we're talking about on each level so it's these air blocks around the outside that are the other part of that percentage that we're not exposing so what I'm going to do is run the numbers and just double check that that's going to be the best place to build it so uh, let me just think blue will be level 10 Red will be level 11 and green will be level 12 and glass will be level 13 and then we'll get to expose um, the most of that with the green layer here. So 45% of all the blocks we'll get to see. So what I've done is I've copied this quite a few times to show you an example of how I want the strip mine to look when it's underground. So the reason I've done this is like this is so we get the most optimal uh, amount of blocks uncovered. So the distance between them is like that so this block isn't the same one twice so we get to see one extra block um, I'm sure that makes sense to you and I've just repeated the pattern over and over again so there's a decision that I made here which is different from how I normally uh, strip mine which is to put three blocks in between each one and I thought about this it makes a lot, a lot of sense I used to put two in between each one now normally when you find say iron or even diamonds you normally find ores in a group like this sometimes they'll be a little distorted you might find them like that but generally they're in a block of eight so if they're going to be in a block of eight and we've got our strip mines uh, two blocks apart then we're going to be seeing 
all of that as well. Um, then if we uncover some more on this side, then we're just going to see it again on the other side. So my logic here is that if we have some ore in the middle, we're going to see it from either side because when they're in a group of eight, they're too wide. So if we were to make this four blocks wide instead of three, then we would have, um, let's just say the green ones, there's our ore, and the green ones actually here, that's the side of our new strip mine, then we would actually miss this. So that's why I've decided to do it like that and have three blocks in between. I think it gives us a bigger chance of actually getting ore. And sometimes ores do, um, the veins even, do spawn funny, like, you know, you get diamond ones like that I've seen before, or sometimes even just two on their own. So there is a chance that we're going to miss, uh, but most of the time they spawn in a group of four like that, especially iron, so that way we're going to pick up um, as much as possible. I've analysed a couple more maps and it seems like levels 8, 9 and 10 always seem to have above average amounts of diamonds and usually quite high above average. So I'd actually be inclined to put my strip mine here because we'd be exposing a lot of these levels. Except because of lava lakes that's going to really slow us down if we're digging through these layers here. So despite learning that I think I'm going to stick at this level because we'll be able to get through it a lot quicker and in the long run probably get more diamonds because of that. So I also found out that when you're standing on top of a block you're actually seeing the number of the block equivalent to it, like this one here. So we're seeing Y66 and that's this block here we're seeing the coordinates for, not the one we're standing on. So before I was building all of my uh, things on level 12 and that would be standing on top of the 11th. So this time we're going to build it on 11, so that's one block lower. And I've also realised that um, I've made a mistake with this over here. I was talking about having groups of four ores like this. Well, they can easily fit into these gaps here. So what I'm actually going to do is make them one block closer together. Now that we know how we're going to be laying out the strip mine, I've dug out this perimeter around the mob spawner and I've measured this out correctly. And what it means we can do is build a pathway that goes all the way around so we can get to all of the strip mines. And I'm going to make this thing free by free, so it'll be uh, free wide and free tall. And the way that I've measured it out means that we can put um, free strip mines on this side going in this direction, and same on the other side, they'll go in that direction. And then the ones down the side will just go off in that direction indefinitely. So at this corner here, the 3x3 three three corridor that I'm going to build is going to go off in that direction as well. And as I said, I measured it out so that the corridors at either end will be either side of the strip mines that we're going to have in the middle and there's going to be three of those. So I am going to start work on digging all of this out and start work on the aesthetics as well. So the strip mine corridors have now been dug out and I made the painful mistake of digging in the wrong place over at the other end, but it's all finished now. And I've started work on the aesthetics, I've been working on this wall here. And what I realised when doing this is that we don't need anything too fancy because it is a strip mine. So I've kept it all quite bland really, I guess would be the word. Um, but when building this I was thinking that at the moment we're only seeing one side of it and perhaps putting some colour in the floor and maybe in the roof as well would really bring something extra to it. And I've also been thinking about lighting. I I think the torches suit a strip mine but I don't really like it that much um, so I might try something else. I was thinking of using pistons with uh, lighting behind like Efo does in his videos except uh, he uses the front texture, the part with the wood and I was thinking of using the back texture and seeing how that looks. Okay I've made a little segment here and I like the lighting that comes through the piston, I like how it looks I also like the floor as well. What I don't like is the width. It feels too narrow and I think this would benefit from being wider. Now I did make it one block wider at first and then that would have meant putting two of these in the middle which I wasn't too keen on. So if I were to make it five blocks wide then it would actually come too far back here and yeah we've got the redstone and the wiring in the way. So what I think I'm going to do is actually just extend it one block that way, one block this way and see what it looks like five wide and I'm just going to do it on this segment before I do the whole wall so that way I can see what it looks like and if it looks better I think I'll go ahead and do that. Okay this looks a lot better and I just realised the cool thing about this is the lighting level doesn't even matter because the floor is made out of these stairs and half slabs and I guess in here it would but my plan is to put a torch down every segment where the branch mine has the poke holes that go left and right so that will be well and truly lit up and although I could space those out further apart 
what I found is it's sometimes hard to see what's at the end of the poke hole so placing a torch every poke hole will be a good idea and I might make a few changes to this I'm happy with how it looks but I don't know when we see more of it in a corridor then perhaps uh, there will be some changes that I want to make and what's also cool about this is that this bit here is five wide so we get to have this thing placed evenly at the top and then the next one's free and the one after that is free as well so it's all going to match up nicely ok I've built a section of this and I can now see that there's some things that I want to change first of all it feels too grey I think uh, the way it breaks up the cobblestone and smooth bricks is ok but we need some panels of a different colour here so I'm not sure what I'm going to do but I'll think of something and also I'm not really too keen on the wood texture at the top here um, if it was the same as this side I think it would look really good and also at the bottom we have this nice little extra bit of, I don't know what you call that, shape yeah we've got an extra bit of shape to the room because of this ledge running along here and I'd like to have that in the ceiling where these bits are but of course we can't get uh, wooden blocks like that so what I might do is change the wood to wooden planks and then put stairs at the top so we can bring a little more shape to it ok this is the first option that I wanted to try and this is the second and this looks awful because of the lighting glitch and what I pictured in my mind actually was having this little ledge here half a block low which you can't actually make which is kind of disappointing because I think if that was just half a block low it looked pretty decent um, so yeah I'm going to have to rethink this I also don't like how the wood looks going up the side as well ok I've switched back to wood the wooden planks wasn't working out at all and I brought down some of the other coloured wooden planks as well now this looks really good with dark wood because it kind of matches up with the wood we have here and I also tried making this row in the middle cobblestone but it actually feels like the balance is just right when it's uh, two blocks of wooden planks and then I thought we'll have those for the big sections and we'll put the lighter wood on the smaller sections like this but it's just too much of a contrast so I think what I'm going to do is um, go with the dark wooden planks and as we build more of this I guess we'll get to see how it feels having lots of the same colours because at the moment we only have like grey uh, and light and dark brown so what I'm going to do next is build the corner section just to figure out how that's going to look because it's going to be a bit of a T-junction here the corridor is going to go off in that direction and that direction so I was about to start work on that when it popped into my head that we have half slabs and stairs for cobblestone as well and I always seem to avoid using cobblestone so I don't really think about that and this actually gives us the shape that we need now I didn't like these bits here because of the wood texture being different but now some of that texture is exposed it feels quite right and I like the way this drops down as well although I'm going to experiment with having that one block higher and see what that looks like as well but yeah I'm very happy with that I'm now going to change the rest of this corridor and see what it looks like this now looks fantastic and I'm really pleased this made all the difference and I love how the light looks I did move it up one block and it didn't look as good because you had this little hole in the ceiling and yeah it looks so good like that and I like how the corner here works although I've only just done the first bit and one thing that will probably happen is you can see how this matches up with this side it's all in line that probably won't happen down at the other end although I could actually make it so the corridor at the other end is a little bit further away um, yeah that would be no harm okay so I'll do that I'll uh, I'll make it line up as well because I like things to be like this otherwise we'd have some wood going across in the middle to a point like this and that would yeah that wouldn't actually look that good um, but I'm going to take a break from doing this now it's taken me a long time to do I keep having to take trips up and down to the surface to get resources and these never portals have gone out of sync so they worked fine when I first made these and it wasn't until I logged out and logged back in that they became out of sync so now both of these go to the strip line and the one on the surface takes you to the nether to this portal but doesn't take you back which is kind of strange um, but some people suggested in the last video that I shouldn't put the portal right next to the place where the mobs dropped and do you know what I think it's probably a good idea to move it anyway so I'll probably move these portals around again there's going to be lots of that going on because we're going to be working on this hub and making it a storage area as well so these portals will be getting moved and I need to move the one in the strip mine as well to a more suitable location um, and then because of this one not being here anymore that means we can actually put it wherever we want which is a big advantage because I can make it fit in nicely with the layout that we have 
So the reason I placed the nether portal here and not directly in the strip mine is because I wanted them side by side in the nether and that's really not actually too much of an advantage because if I were to put the nether portal over this side it's only going to be a few blocks walk in the nether so a little silly to think like that but um, anyway I can put the nether portal wherever I like I could put it over that end um, where it would be close to that one as it is but I'll probably just put it over here since we've already built this bit and because I like things to be nice and symmetrical I don't want to put the nether portal right here in the wall because it's too wide and this is uh, yeah it's five wide and I'm just thinking I could actually put two portals hmm I might do that actually I could put the obsidian behind the wood and the wood here and the cobblestone at the top and have another pillar in the middle here maybe of cobblestone or of wood yeah and just have it so there's two portals and then it fits in quite nicely in fact yeah I'm going to give that a go okay I think that's going to look really good when I light it up I put in some dark wood planks at the back and I didn't really give that too much thought um, I might change that later on but anyway I'm going to go into the nether and build the nether portal on the correct coordinates so we can sync these up okay I'd say that looks really good Nothing too special, but it does the job, and I like how we've got two portals instead of one. It's always nice to see something a little bit different. But then, when you walk out of the portal, you've got a nice view down of this corridor, and when these other two are finished, I think it'll be really good to step out into and see these long corridors with the void fog in them. Um, but anyway, that's all I'm going to be doing for this episode. It takes a long time to do this stuff, but now that I know what building materials I'm going to be using, when I expand this in the future, it's going to be quite easy to get prepared to do all of that. So now I want to move on to something I talked about earlier in the episode, up at the mob spawner. We've got the uh, problem with the mob valve that needs fixing. In a moment what I'm going to do is remove the end half of this mob valve system and move it up by one block so that it's all going to be level. But before I do that I just read a message that I got from Casper MC and he was the guy whose tutorial I saw and found out about this little trick up there. And I mentioned him in the last video and he sent me a message and he told me that I have forgotten to do this fast skill thing and basically what it is is you put two blocks at the bottom that the mobs can stand on instead of one now this doubles up as an XP farm and I'm hoping this sorry doubles up as an XP farm um, a record studio and I'm hoping this doesn't go wrong so I'll just do that quickly hmm, you can see the creeper cooled down because when you stand directly next to the block it means the creeper can blow up um, but it looks like the creeper's on the other side and I don't want to try it here because I'll probably end up falling into the water and then it'll blow up. But anyway, you can see I've got a record and that's beside the point. Um, he called it the fast killing or something along those lines so you can actually hit the mobs faster. And I'm not sure if he meant while you're in the position I am now you'll actually hit more of them uh, or if you were to hit them from this side as well. So it got me thinking that what I might want to do is extend it by more than two blocks and actually have a row going across like this where the mobs can fall down into and spread out a bit and then that way I can just hit them like that going back and forth and I don't have to hit one at a time. So it's hard to tell but I was testing a moment ago and it did seem like it was faster and I just want to try for a record again now that there's a few creepers in there and there you go I think we got one so if you watch I just hit them like this it's hard to tell because they're all moving around but it seems like when I hit the one at the front before I can hit the next one on that block I then hit the one behind it and there's a skeleton there that I can't hit, you can also see I've got another record which is cool, so I'll probably spend some time here in between episodes getting more records and uh, I think I might do an enchantment as well, not a big one and do maybe like level 30 on a pick or something like that so Biffer is here checking out the mob system and I've actually come to a little bit of a problem here now this was all set to work and I seem to remember saying putting the sign on the glass, so what I think I meant was putting it on this block here. And that means that the water would be here and flow down to this block. But then we couldn't put a sign on this one because it gets extended by the mob valve system. So I'm not sure of a solution for that. And then it gives us a problem if we do it like this and put it over to one side. And it's not a huge problem, but basically I've checked it out and I think mobs in water are going to act in a similar way to a player so I stood in there myself and I let the water push me over to this point here and then I moved very slowly towards the next bit until I moved into the next block then I moved out quickly whereas when it's set up like this um, the water pushes you through a lot quicker so I welcome any uh, suggestions and ideas on how to fix this and someone is throwing eggs at me shall I attack him now I'll leave him be 
Um, and then, yeah, when I've got a solution for that, I'll finish building the rest of this bit here. But in the meantime, I can leave the valve system on because it stops the mobs going through, so I don't have to finish it anytime soon. And also, I've been thinking about the hub over here as well. Now, I was thinking that I would take it down, but then I remembered the whole idea for um, using dispensers to put in items like tools that are enchanted and stuff. And I think that's what I'm going to use that area for. So I might redesign it a bit, but it'd be good to have a little central spot like that for uh, stocking up on supplies and armor and all sorts of things. So anyway, um, thanks for watching, and I'll catch you next time.